Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Proofer Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning Code Generator Framework Beginner Tutorial, and this is our part number 24. Inside this video session, guys, we will discuss about Migration Class Library in Code Igniter. And also, guys, if you are a beginner to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe and keep watching our previous video sessions to get the clear concept about Code Igniter Framework Tutorial. So far guys we had discussed about several libraries in Code Ganter framework. So migration class library is one of them. So what basically it is? As we know that if I go to our browser, this is our database table attached with our code editor application. Right now inside this database there is no table that we have made so far. Now inside this database, if we want to create some of the tables by some migration files, then those codes basically known as migrations or suppose if we have existing tables if you want to alter suppose we want to some add columns add primary keys or add more columns remove columns so all those codes basically if we alter our database or create new tables all these things called migrations in code igniter so how basically we can proceed with the migrations if i back to our application now inside here if I type at the URL called user guide, this is the user manual basically code generator provides as a local documentation. So inside here if I scroll down, inside the library references, inside library references there is a library something called migration class. So I scroll down, this is here as we can see. So if I click on that, inside this migration class, migrations are the convenient way for you to alter your database in a structured and organized manner. So basically guys these are the theoretical concepts. Now we are going to the action. So scroll down. Basically as we can find that there is a migration.php file inside our config folder. So back to editor. Now inside application there is a config folder inside this config folder as we can find here is we have a migration.php file if i open that file now inside this file there are several parameters actually we need to configure to use the migration library in our coordinator application so let's start that first of all as we can see that migration enabled basically this is a status which tells you that if you want to use the migration coordinator or not so we need to make it as a true value if we want to use inside this file for the, for each key you can find the documentation is written right here as a comment form so let's see that migration enabled if i make it as a true value scroll down now this is migration type means what type of basically migration we are going to use basically there are two types called sequential and the timestamp what basically it is if we want to use suppose sequential then in that condition if we want to create our migration files so this is the syntax that we have to use something called 001 underscore add underscore block dot php so let's say that we are going to use as a default migration type something called timestamp inside this timestamp migration type we we have to give the file name something called this is the timestamp underscore add underscore block dot php timestamp format is something like here so scroll down this is about the second parameter now inside here we have a migration table as a key right here if we run our migration files then a table will be created in our database something called migrations which basically stores the migration version this is the actually definition of this migration table as you can find inside this migration.php file scroll down to get at the next keys and as we have migration auto latest so i'm not going to do with that this is our migration version so basically guys if we have used our migration type as a timestamp then we can specify as a valid timestamp as our migration version so if i go here routes.php let's say that we want to actually take the current timestamp value to specify at the migration version so let's say echo something called date inside this date i am going to specify something called y m d h i s this is something called year month day hour and second so if i save this file back to our browser 
just duplicate this tab remove all these things press enter and now this is our timestamp so if I copy this timestamp back to editor go to migration.php and also just make it as a comment now go to migration.php and now inside this migration version I am going to specify this is our migration version and finally we have the last configuration key is migration path basically migrations folder is stored inside application folder so if I just close that so if we want to create migration files then we need to create a folder inside this application and something the folder name is should be something called migrations so let's say migrations just press enter open up our application folder inside right here we have created a folder something called migrations this basically key it is as also about all these keys you can find the definition inside this file as in comment form now inside this folder I'm going to create some of the migrations by the help of those migrations we want to create some of the tables inside our database so as we have configured inside our migration PHP file something called migration version and also we have used the migration type something called timestamp so what basically the file name convention we have to follow we have to create any file name with this format something called timestamp underscore add underscore block dot PHP so just go down and let's copy our migration version so if I copy this back to our migrations folder now inside this migrations folder I'm going to create firstly the timestamp and let's say that we are going to create a table something called add users dot php this is the migration first migration file we have created inside this file so what basically code we have to write inside this file firstly save this migration dot php now back to our documentation go to our migration class scroll here all the things we have discussed so far now inside this file this is the code we have to write so if I copy all these codes so just copy that go to our editor pasting it here now inside this file basically this is our method this is not method this is our class name so how basically we have written our class name so migration underscore add underscore blog so basically the file name we have something called timestamp underscore add underscore users so this is not blog this is about users now inside this class we have two methods something called up and the second method we have something down what basically this up method will do up method basically have all the codes to create our table create our database or any other table structure means if you want to execute any SQL query with our database then all the queries should go inside this up method and finally inside this down method if you want to drop any table any let's say database any keys we need to write all the codes inside this down method so let's say that we are going to use or uh, we are going to create or add users table so if I back to slides let's say that we are going to create a users table inside this users table we have some column something called ID second column let's say name third column let's say email let's say address and finally let's say that we have a column something called status what should be the data type for that it should be in teaser it should be var care it should also be var care so if I copy this data type pasting it here and it should be something called text and finally this should be int but the default value in this case something called default something we have the value of 1 and also for this address field it will support the null value and also for the email field the maximum length we have something called 100 characters it should also be about 100 characters so these are the things actually we need to do with our users table so how can we make the structure with our migration file so back to our editor 
let's say that this db forge basically we need to use this is the object we need to use to make our table or to add any field so we want to create our users table and inside that users table these are the columns that we have to make and one more last thing that we need to do is something that this integer value should be primary key and also this should be auto increment okay so back to our editor let's say that first column it should be id second column we have to make as a name so let's say that name and if i copy this thing pasting it here pasting it here because we have five columns something called name email let's say address and finally we have something called status so let's say status go up now inside this debit forge add field inside add field method we have passed column names as in array format each column has a separate array all the combined array is goes inside this add field method now next we have to specify all these parameters like integer primary key auto increment where care its length integer default value one we should pass each and every key inside here as a key value of array for the id section we have something called it should be int so type should be int constant basically it denotes about the length of this integer value so let's say five it means that primary key is generated should be length of five characters something like that okay so constant equal to five unsigned equal to true it means that it will contain the positive values and auto increment equal to true it means that we are going to set the primary key as our id value so all the things we have completed for this id column next we have to move on the name so inside this name we have to make as a type equal to varchar and the constraint should be 100 so back here so let's say name equal to and type should be var care and constraint should be something called 100 characters and also guys this should not be on the upper case if you want to just specify something called var care it should be okay so back here next we have to go inside email section so inside email section same thing about var care under 100 characters so type equal to var care and the constraint should be 100 characters Next we have something called address inside this type equal to text and the default equal to null. So back here and let's say that this should not be varchar, this should be text and also constant is not specified because it should be multi characters. Now inside this double quotes we are going to specify that is something called null equal to true. It means that it will contain the null value as the default value. Next we have the column something called status, it should be type equal to int, so let's say status type equal to int and also we have the default value of 1, so let's say default equal to something we have one value. So following are the columns guys we have added inside our users table. Now finally I am going to make as a id as a primary key, so back here, so this db forge add key and this is the column name so we are going to make id as a primary key now finally we have to create table so create table something called users so this is the table we are going to create now inside this drop table we are going to use called users so finally guys we have completed all the syntaxes of this migration file so how can we run that back to our documentation all the things we have done here now finally we need to create a migrate.php controller inside this controllers folder or if we want to create any user defined name it should be okay there is no naming convention for this migrate.php if you want to create run migrate it should be okay so let's go ahead and create a migrate.php file inside our controllers folder so let's say new file let's say migrate.php so if I back to documentation, copy all the codes, back here, pasting here, so we have made a migrate controller inside our controllers folder. Inside that file, we have an index method, 
inside that index method we have loaded our migration library inside that we have run our current migration so if I save this file back to routes or also if I back to our browser and let's say that we are going to run our migration controller so let's say that migrate by tapping this migrate this is our controller name by tapping that actually we are going to hit our method something called index here okay so let's go ahead and hit here so something enter and as we can see that there is no error so back to our database reload this structure now inside this structure as we can see that there are two tables automatically generated this is not automatically because we have run migration here so back here firstly let's open about migrations table now inside this migrations table this is our mysql error now this is our version this version basically we have stored inside migration.php as we can see here so migrations table basically stores the migration version now next we have the table something called users and also this is my database error now if I open a structure now inside this structure as we can see that here we have five columns called ID primary key unsigned and auto increment these are the parameters actually we have set right here inside this file about adding our ID key these are the parameters again if I back to our database go here name as we can see that this is varchar 100 of length email 100 of length address text and default as we can see that null value and also we have a status column this and it contains a default value of 1 so basically guys this is our database table we have created using migrations concept so let's make a summary before closing this video so back to editor so what we have done basically inside this migration.php we have configured this file to use our migrations like a migration type firstly we have to enable that migration type migration version and migration path next we have created a folder inside our inside our application folder something called migrations inside this migrations this is the file that we have created what should be the naming convention for that actually we have used migration type equal to timestamp that's why we have used called timestamp underscore add underscore users by making this file we have made a class with that name inside that class we have two methods something called up and the down method all the configurations of the table something called adding fields all we have done inside app up method and also if you want to drop that method we have used called down method after configuration this file we have go inside this controllers folder and made a migrate.php controller inside this migrate controller we have an index method inside this index we have loaded our library and finally we have run our current migrations also we have to see about the migration type something called sequential and the other step related to our migrations all we will see in our next video so inside this video session guys if you have any doubt then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching have a great day